Hi, I'm Ksenia and thank you so much for joining me for this series looking at Jupiter's transits through each house of the horoscope. It is lovely to have you with me. I especially want to welcome all the people who are viewing this who are new to astrology. I hope this video helps you learn more and understand more about how astrology operates and the effects of astrology in your life. And also welcome back to those of us who are a little bit more seasoned in our knowledge of astrology. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Hopefully, if you are more seasoned in astrology, you'll be able to help out those who leave comments in the comments section looking for answers and, quest and asking questions. So thank you for helping and supporting me in that endeavor and to help make this a beautiful community where we can communicate and uplift one another on our journey to know more about astrology. So we're going to be looking at Jupiter transiting through the houses. But first, let's look a little bit about Jupiter itself as a planet. There's so much to know about Jupiter. What a fantastic planet and it's such a joy and a thrill and a delight to be talking about Jupiter, stepping into Jupiter energy because he is known as in astrology the great benefic, bringing benefit, bringing expansion, bringing growth, bringing abundance into our lives wherever he sits in the chart, in the natal chart. But as I said, in this instance, we're looking at transits and, ha and the benevolence that he brings where that's going to be felt and experienced more um, according to transits. But let's start by looking at Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is a magnetizer. If you think about Jupiter out there in the actual outer space, Jupiter energy draws things in. It's got this massive magnetis field for a start, and it also it attracts objects around it into its gravitational pull. So it's, it's this massive planet, and it is quite literally a magnetizer, draws things to it out there in space. And the same energy is represented by Jupiter uh, in astrology as well. So when it transits a house or a sign, and we're using whole sign astrology with this, where each sign represents a house, it will draw things to it of the nature of that sign or that house. It will magnetize those things, pull those things in and make them uh, manifest more in the life of the individual and the life of the collective as well, I might add too. As I said, Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system and it is therefore very effectual. Jupiter uh, very nearly became a second sun in the formation of our solar system millions of years ago and would have entered into therefore a binary system with our, uh, our actual sun or maybe one of them might have gobbled the other up, who knows, but they, uh, Jupiter didn't quite get there, didn't quite have the oomph that it took. But nonetheless, Jupiter is massive and he functions very much um, in the nature of a, a benevolent sun in our chart, bringing confidence um, and bringing uh, illumination to things. And because of his mass his energy, his energetic output, as I said, he has this monstrous magnetosphere um, that reaches out into um, the zone of Saturn, actually. They, it crosses into Saturn's orbit. Um, and because of this influence of Jupiter that is so expansive, quite literally in the skies and figuratively in astrology as well, the effects of, Ju of Jupiter are far-reaching and very, very influential. Jupiter is expansive in astrology as goes with the, the idea and the nature of um, as above, so below, and him being the biggest planet, the most expansive planet, his energy in our lives is very expansive as well. In fact, he is so big that you could fit 1,300 earth size balls <laughs> inside of Jupiter. 1,300, it's a phenomenal thought, difficult to get our head around, really. Not only that, you could actually fit every single other planet in the solar system into Jupiter all at once. Go figure, he's enormous. So he brings expansion with his transits and with his natal placement as well. He brings abundance as well. He brings enthusiasm. He brings opportunities. He brings, as I said before, confidence. He brings also a sense of morality to an area of our life wherever he's transiting. He brings a, a need for ethics to wherever he's transiting. And he brings a sense of adventure and, ooh, what could I experience now? What can this do for me? How can I utilize this? What, it, what can I learn about this? He brings that energy to the area of the chart that he's transiting as well. Jupiter rules 
being charitable, generosity, giving, and he will bring this character of benevolence into whatever area of your chart that he happens to be transiting. You will feel more benevolent, more charitable in, the, you know, and feel like giving to that area of your life in, a, in greater capacity. Jupiter is also very forward looking. And so his transit to a certain area of our house will give us more of a, a forward looking approach to the themes of that house. He allows us, he's, he's actually a planet that connects to prophecy and he allows us to gain a glimpse of the potential of the future possibilities of a house. He gives us the chance to extend and expand beyond our current limits in a certain area or realm of life that, that is connected to the house in which he's transiting. One of my favorite mantras that I use frequently is um, I expand to meet my destiny. I, this is my mantra when I practice yoga and do all sorts of other things in life and I remind myself I can expand and become big enough to um, embrace the destiny that the universe has for me, the highest vibrational good that is represented in my chart. So if you're feeling limited or blocked in a certain area, certain realm of life, just wait till Jupiter gets to that, um, that section of your chart and watch the blossoming occur. Watch, watch yourself expand beyond the, the limits you perceived that were around you. The blockages, the restrictions in a certain area can be absolutely sort of pushed out. The boundaries are expanded for you to experience more blessing, more abundance, more prosperity in a certain area. How this works is that well, Jupiter has a connection to our visioning processes, our you know our dreaming. Like Jupiter in ancient astrology rules the sign of Pisces, and Pisces is all about our dreams and and you know daydreams, night dreams, all that sort of thing. So Jupiter has a connection to the governance of our visioning, of our dreams, of our imagination, and our intuition. So it's our intuition and our imaginative visioning processes when we sit on the couch on a, you know, a nice spring afternoon with a cup of, you know, Earl Grey tea and we're looking out the window dreaming about what we'd like our life to look like, who we want to be, how we'd really like it to work out for us. That begins the process of expansion. Because it's in those processes of trusting our intuition and tapping into our imagination and our visioning you know, processes that we begin an, a shift of energy within us. And that's when the old hermetic principle of as within, so without starts to work for us. When we change our inner being, then we start to see external circumstances change to reflect that shift in energy within us. And Jupiter does his work on that inner level. He is also an externally manifesting planet, but he begins by working on this inner level, creating a higher vibration for us through allowing us to feel more abundance, more joy, more optimism, more joviality. The word jovial comes from the word Jupiter, actually. And it's through this inner change in our levels of optimism and uh, abundance consciousness that then we begin to see the manifestation happen in reality and we start to see our outer circumstances change and Jupiter begins that process by when he transits a house by lifting our vibrational level inner in our inner world to be able to receive on the outer world. Now Jupiter is named after the ancient Roman god, uh, king of the gods actually in mythology and there's an association with Thor in Norse mythology, there's an association with um, Zeus in Greek mythology and there's an association with Marduk in the ancient Babylonian mythology as well. So that he has links to all those energies of being the, the supreme god or governor over all or, um, you know, the, the, the one top authority, top dog, so to speak. And because of that, he actually rules in astrology lawmakers, judges, legal systems, higher levels of knowledge, um, places of, of learning that are of that, that higher level you know um, universities and colleges he also governs things like religion and belief systems long distance travels not just short little trips but the big we're talking Jupiter his big big travels overseas or to other you know countries that are far away he governs other cultural practices and other cultural beliefs he, like Jupiter represents other cultures in general and he also is a representation of higher knowledge from the divine realms. And it's this that makes him the Lord of intuition, the angel on our shoulder, giving us wisdom and guidance in our journey. The guru, as he's known in Vedic astrology, 
Jupiter is referred to as guru and there's a very good reason for that because he gives this wisdom he gives this knowledge he is the the wise you know angel on our shoulder now this is a spring series uh, that I am preparing. It's spring in Australia when I'm launching this series. If you're watching it at different times of the year, it'll be a different season, obviously. But in Australia, it is spring at the moment, which I thought was a perfect time to be doing a series on Jupiter and his transits because spring is about growth. Spring is about the expansion, the, the, you know, the blossoming and very much the, the abundant nature of Jupiter represented in spring. But Jupiter actually rules the colors purple and orange. And as you can see, I'm wearing a purple cardigan with my spring attire here. Um, and there's purple flowers all over my dress. Also, if you look behind me, I've decorated part of my house with um, a lot of purple and orange. There's an orange door there and a purple painting and so on and so on, because I really want to channel the energy of Jupiter in my home. I myself am a very highly Jupiterian person. And so I really want to bring that energy in. And Jupiter governs these things. Jupiter rules the crystals lapis lazuli and malachite, according to the, the research that I have done. There's some varying opinions around that, but this is malachite. I don't have any lapis lazuli on me at the moment, but I will be getting more. Lapis lazuli um, was often used and possibly malachite as well in ancient Egyptian jewelry and tomb decorations and so it was con it was was attributed to the the pharaohs or not attributed to the pharaohs but it had connections to this leadership element in ancient Egypt that was only the wealthy only the um, prosperous only the pharaohs and their families that were able to enjoy um, the luxuries of uh, lapis lazuli and malachite and of course, Jupiter has these associations with abundance and with wealth and with the lawgivers and leaders. Jupiter's day is Thursday. Now, those of you who are familiar with how the days of the week got their names will know that it's it comes from the Norse Thor's day. And we've already said Jupiter has an affiliation with Thor. Jupiter, um, Jupiter's day that he rules of the week is Thursday, Thor's day. Now, because of all these wonderful things that Jupiter governs, and we're going to talk about a few more of those in just a minute, but because he rules abundance, because he rules wealth, because he rules a certain type of leadership, that inspirational figure, that lawmaker, that religious leader, that spiritual leader, that divinely inspired leader, because Jupiter rules these things, Wherever Jupiter sits in your chart is where you're going to be able to channel and receive more abundance, more wealth, more um, opportunity, more good fortune, more prosperity. All these things that Jupiter rules will come into the house where your Jupiter sits in the natal chart. But that's a series for another day when we look at Jupiter through the houses in the natal chart. We're looking at transiting Jupiter in this series. So a bit more about the things that Jupiter rules. Let me read this list to you. He rules children. He rules wealth. He rules belief systems. He rules the blood. He rules the veins. He also rules the hips and the ability to move forward in life is obviously connected to our ability to utilize our hips. So Jupiter also governs our capacity and our ability to move forward in life as well. Jupiter rules everything from... Uh, of, uh, sort of accommodation of a very high level um, or public buildings of a very high level, universities, but things like castles, cathedrals, casinos are all ruled by Jupiter. Um, and not that casinos are of a high level, but there is the element of luck and wealth and prosperity that's sort of um, associated with casinos that gives Jupiter the rulership of casinos. But the belief systems around cathedrals and ashrams and the buildings that govern um, our belief systems or that connect with our belief systems. Jupiter rules those as well as the high level um, places where we reside, castles and, um, you know, um, estates and things like that of a, a very high nature, high caliber. He rules etiquette, he rules manners. 
in a woman's chart, Jupiter rules husbands and um, generally he rules beautiful things like joy and happiness. If we want to know where we can feel the most joy and happiness in life, look to where your Jupiter sits in your natal chart or where Jupiter's transiting. You know you'll be able to generate more joy in that area, more happiness. Jupiter rules devotion, being devoted to something or someone. At a perhaps not so pleasant level, Jupiter rules obesity. He is, after all, the largest planet in the solar system. He's big. Um, and if you have Jupiter placed in the first house, he can usually, in the natal chart, he can make you taller than average, but you've got to watch your weight in later age <laughs> because you can tend to spread out and become very Jupiter-like in the way you look, very round in the middle. In fact, Jupiter as a planet bulges in the middle due to his rotation speed and gravitational pull and all that sort of thing that affects um, the shape of Jupiter and he bulges out in the middle so when we have Jupiter in the first house we do have to be very careful of bulging out in the middle at some point in life hence I have to watch what I eat. <laughs> So Jupiter rules beautiful things as well, like benevolence, philanthropy, get my words out, and prayer. So these are glorious things that Jupiter rules. And these are only a few of the areas of life that you might notice Jupiter influencing through his transits or through your natal chart placement as well. There's, a, there's just masses of things, as is the, you know, befitting to the nature of a very big planet. There's a very big list of things that Jupiter governs in our lives but there's just a few. Now Jupiter is at his most powerful in fire and water signs so when he's in the earth signs or the air signs it's not that he doesn't bring you know beneficial results he's just a little bit lackluster he doesn't have the oomph he doesn't have the you know ta-da kind of capacity that he would in water or fire signs he's just a little bit ta-da you know the energy is not quite the same not quite as full he is especially strong in Sagittarius which he rules Pisces which is the other sign that he rules in traditional astrology ancient astrology and he is especially strong where he is exalted in the sign of Cancer so if you are experiencing a transit of Jupiter to Pisces, Sagittarius or Cancer at some time in life, then you're going to experience uh, more, more of his benevolence in a very ta-da kind of way um, because of the strength of Jupiter in these signs. Jupiter has a natural affiliation with the ninth house, the most prosper not prosperous, the most lucky house in astrology, the most blessed house in astrology, the ninth house, and Jupiter has a natural affiliation to that house. He also has a natural affiliation to the twelfth house, which is interestingly enough one of the malefic houses in Vedic astrology. But Jupiter has an affiliation to that because of his governance of the sign Pisces which has all this 12th house energy. Um, so Jupiter is very comfortable when he's in the 12th house or the 9th house. But Jupiter is actually um, has his strongest directional strength and greatest effect in either the 1st house, particularly the 1st house. That's where Jupiter has his greatest directional strength or gives the, the strongest influence for good. Um, but it, the, there is also a strong influence of Jupiter when he's in the 10th house. This is where Jupiter does his best work in the 1st house or the 10th house. So if you're experiencing that by transit as well, you're going to experience a lot more of the blessing, especially if you happen to have Sagittarius, Pisces or Cancer as your 1st or 10th house and Jupiter's transiting there. Hang on to your hats, it's going to be fun. <laughs> now, wherever Jupiter is transiting is where you can actually contribute most to society. And this is because Jupiter is charitable, Jupiter is generous, Jupiter is a philanthropist, Jupiter is a, a bene benefic, he brings benefits. So you yourself can be these energies or give these energies to the world and, and your role on the planet. So, you know, Jupiter might be transiting, for example, the fifth house so you can give your um, your benefit your charity your philanthropy to children because that is where um, the energy is of benevolence and generosity is being directed by transit also consider that in your natal placement of Jupiter as well where you can be the most generous and give um, you know in a very benevolent philanthropic way wherever Jupiter sits in your natal chart also so without further ado Let's go in now and have a look at where Jupiter is transiting and how it might affect you. So how do we find Jupiter in the fifth house? 
Well, let's use Jupiter's current position as I'm recording this as an example. We need to know a bit of whole sign astrology to be able to determine where Jupiter is. First of all, the best thing to do is to go to an app like planetwatcher.com or astro.com and go to the chart of the moment there and find out in what sign Jupiter is currently transiting. Currently, as I'm recording this video, Jupiter is in Capricorn. So if that was the case and Jupiter is in Capricorn, it takes one year to go through each sign. So um, you know, if you're watching in a couple of years time, it's going to be different to this. But if Jupiter is in Capricorn, we would need to look for five houses before Capricorn to be our rising sign. Capricorn, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Libra and Virgo. So if it's any help to you to figure this out, whether you are having a transit of Jupiter to your fifth house, you would want to look in on my wheel chart here for um, the same color indicating the same modality. In this case, we're looking at Earth energy. Virgo would be the rising sign and Jupiter would be transiting through the fifth house Capricorn. One, two, three, four, five. And that would make this video very relevant to you. If you're looking in a couple of years times to say Jupiter is in Pisces, well, you want to look five houses in whole sign astrology before the sign of Pisces, which would be Scorpio. Or maybe if Jupiter was transiting Taurus, five houses before Taurus would be Capricorn as the rising sign. That's what we're looking at here. The rising sign is the indicator of where Jupiter will subsequently be transiting in whole sign astrology. So for anybody watching at the moment, this video is loaded. It'll be Virgo rising. We'll be experiencing right now in 2020 a transit of Jupiter through the fifth house. Next year in 2021, it will be Libra rising people who are experiencing a transit of Jupiter through their fifth house. So I hope that helps you understand how to find Jupiter and where Jupiter is transiting in your chart. But what does the fifth house rule? What is the fifth house all about? Well, the fifth house is some rather nice things. In fact, it's the second luckiest house in the horoscope and it rules lovers, romance, dating, pleasure, joy. The fifth house is um, connected to anything creative, so our hobbies, but um, our creative expression, you know, maybe we're a, a performer or a singer or maybe we're in literature or something and we share our creative intelligence with the world through some sort of creative mechanism. Also, children are seen from the fifth house and that's because children are a very creative thing. You have to be very creative. <laughs> Do you, well, you don't have to be very creative to make children, but... Um, Children are the, the, the most creative thing that we can actually generate from ourselves as human beings. You know, we might do art, we might do sculpture, we might, you know, do interior design, whatever. But really nothing is as creative as the production of another human. So children are being creative. They are seen through the fifth house as well, because this is a house of creative intelligence. So naturally, when Jupiter transits here, he's going to bring a lot of expansion and growth and abundance to fifth house things, especially our creative intelligence. So our ability to imagine, our ability to create, our ability to be very unique and original is just made much more um, abundant and prosperous and expansive under this energy for a whole year. What a joy if you're in a creative industry. This is going to be such a blessed period of your life productively and for work. You know, if, if you're working as an artist or a, an actor or something like that, it's going to bring a lot of benefit your way. Now, your freedom to express your creativity and to express yourself and your creative mind is increased too because with Jupiter here, there are less boundaries, less restrictions, less rules on how you can do that. So, you you know, you won't be as concerned with the, the social parameters any longer that govern um, creative expression. You'll be just like, let me just share it with the world. Let me share my heart with the world. Let me share myself with the world is the energy behind this. So not only are there less rules and restrictions in place around your creative expression, but there also you might experience less duties and less responsibilities this year as well, because this is a house of pleasure and enjoyment and the things that we love to do. It's about entertainment, being entertained, going out to concerts and plays and, um, you know, out for restaurants and having a lot of good social interaction. Fifth house energy is fun. 
and Jupiter is a planet of joy. So, you know, all those heavy duty responsibilities and hard work and all that sort of thing, they're going to take a back seat for you this year. You're going to be very much focused on joy, pleasure and, um, and happiness. How wonderful. You might find that the opportunity for more celebrations comes up because Jupiter rules ceremony. And so it might be that you are invited to more weddings this year or engagement parties this year. You might get the chance to, um, well, look, other fifth house things are to go on more dates this year, to have more romance in your life uh, as well. You might get the chance to, um, you know, experience more excitement in your everyday life you know there might be just more happiness and optimism in everything that you do under this energy too so it's great if you enjoy going out dancing going to clubs going to concerts going to you know any entertainment or public pleasure is going to feel very fulfilling for you very um, really hit the right spot for you um, so now's a chance to go and see that person that you've always wanted to go and see in concert because it's going to be a buzz it's going to be a blast. You're going to get your money's worth. This also includes any recreational entertaining well, sports activities as well. So if you like going and seeing the Stanley Cup or you, you know, you're really into the soccer or something, you know, great time under this energy to enjoy that sort of thing as well. It doesn't mean your team's going to win, by the way, but you'll just enjoy the experience. As I said, this is the house of uh, children and it's the house of the creation of children um, it's not the house of pregnancy that's a different house but um, because of the creative energy of the fifth house it is rep it does represent being able to fall pregnant so pregnancy is actually an eighth house matter but being able to actually conceive and fall pregnant is a fifth house thing so with Jupiter here planet of children in the house of children Jupiter expanding the possibilities of everything fifth house means that if you're looking to have a child this could be your year Things might gel, things might come together and work for you. Of course, it really depends on your natal chart as well, what planets are where and what influences are where for the, abil the ability to actually fall pregnant. But generally, this is amplified now and it's a good time to try for a baby if that's something that you would like. Watch out too if you know you you don't want to get pregnant. You know, make sure you're using protection because under this energy, you know, it could just have a little accident or something like that as well. So forewarned is forearmed, as they say. This is the house of education for teenage age. Um, children if you want to call them children or teenagers and so if you're a teacher of teenagers at a high school then this energy is going to be very supportive of you you know you'll be able to develop a good rapport with your students they, they will appreciate you you will appreciate them the energy is very benevolent you will help expand their lives and grow their knowledge in a beautiful way that just feels easy and abundant and beautiful for you so that can be very uh, very much a blessing if that's your field of work in fact, if it is your field of work, you're going to be very blessed this year. Your career will, will really rocket and take off and, and you know, great abundance is available to you, maybe even promotion available to you if you work with teenage children in any way. As I said before, also if you're in a creative career, in a political career, in um, anything to do with being a celebrity or in any kind of glamorous type based career as well, this is the year when you can really have a lot of things go your way career wise if that's the field that you, your profession is. In. If you're in the dating industry as well, maybe you make dating apps or you host events for people to who are single to meet one another. If that's your field as well, then you might find that there is a great opportunity for you to excel under this energy as well. But all in all, it's a year of optimism. It's a year of purpose because Jupiter is belief systems and so whatever you undertake that has a fifth house connection to it you'll want it to be meaningful you want it to have purpose you know dating will be fun yes it will but also you won't really be interested in dating people who are superficial you know who are shallow you'll want to date people where there's a bit of substance you know you can have a good conversation and there's some intellectual sparring going on there of a really beneficial nature because Jupiter is higher knowledge higher wisdom Jupiter is um, to understand the, the divine nature Jupiter is faith Jupiter is spiritual belief and so you may if you're dating you'll probably want to incorporate those things into your dinner dates and your conversation and maybe even to the activities that you do that you'll find pleasurable. Also, you'll want meaning and purpose with your children as well. You know, you, you, the time you spend with your kids will be fun and uplifting and joyful, but you'll also want it to be meaningful. You also want to have an underlying energy of, I want 
this to create connection between myself and my children. I want to establish relationship with my children. There'll be a purpose of, of a benevolent kind, of a, a beneficial kind, behind your joyful, um, abundant interactions with children and also with lovers. It's a year if popularity is important to you as part of your career, if you need to reach a lot of people and you want to be well liked, this is a year when that can come your way. You know, you might expand your, um, your reach and your, you know, people will just generally like you more and they'll be more responsive to you because Jupiter will bring its benevolence into the house of popularity and celebrity. Bonus if that's the field that you actually work in. Fifth house is a house of risk taking as well. So if you're in an industry that is kind of a, a risk taking industry, I mean, what I do is a risk taking venture, you know, from week to week, I don't know what I'm going to earn. It is in that sense, therefore a risk, you know, I could earn nothing and then next week I could earn heaps and you know, who knows, it's a, it's a risky venture, um, often being in your own business and, and sort of running things that way. But if you feel like taking risks under this energy, you should do so. So if you want to start a, a business venture that's of the more risk-taking type, then, you know, without a regular wage or anything like that, then you should do it under this energy because Jupiter will support you. Jupiter will bring abundance to that endeavor. In fact, you'll feel like risk-taking isn't quite so threatening under this energy and you'll be feeling more optimistic about the results that it could bring you. Um, that's that's really wonderful and hopefully it does bring you those results. Just watch out for overly expansive thinking from Jupiter because there is a shadow side to Jupiter which is to be um, too optimistic and think that you know just ex too big a dreams that actually can't manifest in reality. We go beyond the realistic. Um, not that that's a bad thing, it's good to aim high, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, just don't be disappointed if they don't manifest. Be celebrate, um, you know, have a celebration of what you do achieve rather than feeling like oh I didn't get XYZ you know. This is a house of our individuality also and that is on a high now it's at a peak with Jupiter here. Um, our individual expression, our autonomousness, you know our, our need to be truly ourselves in an authentic way is expanded because of Jupiter's contact here and that can be really good especially if you're in a, in a career that requires you to do something very independently, very creatively. It's very helpful. It's the house of ego and your ego is very strengthened under this energy. Now often we hear, there's an old song in Australia called ego is not a dirty word. We often hear that that ego is bad and you've got to let go of the ego but every human being has an ego and every, every human being kind of needs a bit of ego to get where they need to go in life and to actually achieve anything and do anything and you know exist on the planet. You need a bit of ego. It's when things go to the nth degree and we're governed by our ego, we're ruled by our ego that things get out of control. Control. So watch out for ego getting out of control, you know, and you know, you, you being a slave to the whims of your ego. If you don't know what that's all about, check out the works of Eckhart Tolle and he'll enlighten you on that fact. But your ego is also likely to be strengthened under this energy. So yeah, it could be expanded out and sort of, you know, overblown. But the better um, manifestation of this energy is that your ego is strong and you know people who you know the haters show up on YouTube or people are attacking you or you've got that critical co-worker who just drives you bananas under this energy it's going to be like water off a duck's back. The ego is too strong to give a damn what those people think and it doesn't matter you know. It's very helpful in that regard. You'll feel very sociable, you'll have a lot of self-love and you will also manifest feelings of deservability. And when we do that, when we manifest feelings of deservability, it's the old hermetic principle, as within, so without. How I feel about myself inside or my perspective on the world reflects how things shift and change and what I experience on the outer. So if we're feeling deserving of the good things in life, of the pleasures, of the joy, of the fun, of the happiness, that's what we tend to experience more of. And so under this energy, that's amplified and what a blessing that is too. We're going to feel more powerful. We're going to feel more comfortable with any type of leadership positions, any fame that comes our way, any notoriety that comes our way or celebrity. Um, in fact, this can trigger a rise into those things for some of us who have the planets in our natal chart that indicate that will happen. 
If you're into playing the stock market, for you, if you are having a fifth house transit of Jupiter, it's great for investing. It's great for playing the stock market. You will have a lot of support behind you with this benevolent planet of wealth in the house of the stock market. So again, those risk-taking ventures can prove quite beneficial for you under this energy, provided your natal chart indicates that that's a good um, area for you to work in. I mean, if you've got Saturn in the fifth house, yeah, maybe not so flash, but um, or maybe you need to look long term at your investments and the risk taking that you're under uh, that you're doing rather than expecting short term gains. But Jupiter here um, is generally um, going to give benevolence in areas of risk taking, like the stock market. Now, if in your natal chart Jupiter happens to have a bad dignity and really bad aspects, you know, maybe a a square from Saturn or a square from Pluto or something like that, and um, and in a, in a difficult sign where it's not overly comfortable. If that's what you've got in your natal chart, then this might be a time when there's too much partying, there's too much gluttony, there's too much, you know, having good food and it goes to your waist or, um, you know, you're, you're out drinking until four in the morning every night of the week and then you, your everyday life suffers, you know, hedonism and, and over and um, overblown sort of pleasures can actually be the result here. Now, I've given you sort of a quite extreme example, where I think it is anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's uh, when we have a difficult Jupiter in our chart, then the results can be more, uh, yeah, fun and pleasure, but a bit more challenging and a bit more uh, of fun and pleasure in the negative sense. So just watch out for that if, if you do have a challenged Jupiter and try to channel the energy into the more positive expressions if you can. Work at the highest level of your Jupiter rather than giving in to that lower vibrational level. Now in the Hindu system, um, the fifth house rules things like kings and rulers, um, the mind and the past life credit, our karma from past lives that's good that's the thumbs up the things we did well in a past life are seen from the fifth house in the hindu system of astrology so due to these things um, your mental perspective will be very happy first of all and your interest in you know maybe sort of uh, alternative kind of things like hypnotism uh, mantras um, you know, realizing your karmic worth, that kind of thing can be uh, strengthened under this energy as well. So um, what you, you kind of get your deserved karmic ripening of a, of a benevolent sense, of a good sense. So if, if say in a past life, you um, did a lot of charitable acts for people, well, with Jupiter transiting the fifth house, that fruit that, or those seeds that you, you sowed um, of kindness and service in a past life might fruit now and bring you rewards and bring you blessing that comes your way. Now, at the same time as Jupiter is aspecting the fifth house by his transit through here, he is also aspecting the ninth house and the first house, two very beneficial houses in the Hindu horoscope. And he's also aspecting the house opposite. Um, this is going to cause these areas of your life to be uplifted and upheld for the year ahead as well. So the aspect to the first house, and of course, Jupiter's aspects are always benevolent because he is a benevolent planet, and that's how the Hindu system works. If it was Saturn making an aspect, they're always going to be more challenging because that's how um, the Hindu system works. It's based not on the aspect that's being made, but on the planet that's making the aspect. So here, the aspect to the first house indicates good luck and being, you know, well favored, if you like, and having good health of the body and the body's journey and the body's whole experience in this particular year. So what you experience in the physical realm, in the as a human being in this realm, is going to be of the, on the positive side, on the uplifted side, on the benef beneficial side because of Jupiter's aspect to the house of the body and the body's journey through this lifetime. The aspect to the ninth house is going to give you more opportunities for travel, more opportunities to expand your understanding and your knowledge, and more opportunities um, to be in a, a place of favor and blessing from 
teachers and gurus and wisdom keepers, um, especially spiritually oriented wisdom keepers and teachers and gurus. They will bring a lot of benefit and blessing uh, into your life also. And finally, the, the aspect to the seventh house in the Hindu system indicates good times with friends because the 11th house is friends, good times in groups, um, opportunities in groups, expansive experiences with groups and with friends. And it'll be easy to fulfill your goals because the 11th house is goals and dreams and that will come easily to you this year. Um, and with so many opportunities constantly coming through, you're going to have a very blessed experience this year because the, 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 the best houses in the Hindu system, the, the ninth house, the fifth house, the first house and also the very auspicious 11th house are all being triggered by Jupiter. So if you're having this transit, know that in the Hindu system, it's a winning one for a very successful year in your life. Enjoy.